Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Irish Hypnotherapy Conference 2025. Uh, it's hard to believe we're here again, but here we are. And it is a returning face, someone who joined us for the first time last year. Wonderful presentation. First thing Sunday morning. Apologies for that, Gary. But here you are. Absolutely. <laughs> not first thing Sunday morning. Says I you. certainly hope not. <laughs> welcome back. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me back. I'm looking forward to it already. Uh, last year was absolutely brilliant. Um, some great speakers from uh, Europe and all over the world, America and particularly from Ireland. So it's great to, to see those. Uh, and I know this year we've got a load of international speakers from America, from Canada, Ireland, obviously, and all over Europe as well. All over Europe, is, absolutely. So uh, And also the fun, side, the fun social side as well, which was great fun. There. That will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and even just talking, I mean, so many people are coming over that, I mean, this will probably be going on days before, days after, you know, in terms of it'll just keep keep extending outwards, which is uh, <laughs> yeah, which is great. Um, so, Gary, who is, just for those, obviously people, some people will know you, some people won't. So just for those who don't know you, who is Gary Coles? Right. OK, I'm Gary Coles. Uh, I'm from the UK, from England, south of England. Um, I've been a full time hypnotherapist for coming up for 20 years uh, and I've got a few specialisms uh, and a few sort of different things. First of all, I was one of the few hypnotherapists in the UK to be awarded a Master of Science degree in clinical hypnotherapy. Um, that was a, a research master's. Um, I've got a lot of experience of working with cancer patients, uh, hypno-oncology, uh, and I did some groundbreaking research into pre-surgical hypnosis and the effects that had on recovery quality in breast cancer operations. I had uh, also got uh, contracted to the NHS for 19 years uh, with working in uh, a cancer unit in a major hospital. So I've worked with several thousand cancer patients. I know what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and over the years of sort of perfected techniques, um, then people decided I was a bit of an expert on that and things escalated. So I ended up um, presenting all around the world at conferences. Um, I then put a training course together and I've taught doctors in Belgium, psychologists in Bahrain, uh, people in Australia via Zoom, uh, lots of people in America. Um, so that, that's great as well. And, uh, and, and one of the great things that uh, I will add in here, it's obviously now being recognised um, because I, I go around the world. I've recently been talking at the Mid-America conference in Chicago uh, in their 41st conference. They've been going a long time, very respected uh, conference, uh, and they do a recognition awards each year. And I was very honoured and rather surprised this year uh, to pick up the award of uh, Medical Hypnotherapist of the Year. Uh, so I'm thinking absolutely. if I can be in the UK and make splashes like that in, in the USA, I must be doing something OK. That is absolutely fantastic. Well done, yeah. you. Thank you. Um, the pre-surgical hypnosis, uh, you said Belgium. Uh, so I'm reminded of a... Um, of a Netflix documentary on, on pre-surgical hypnosis, which I think is in Belgium. Okay. Do you do you see much of that expanding worldwide as in pre-surgical hypnosis? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there's a couple of ways of it. The, the, there is the surgical hypnosis, which I don't get involved in because that's, that's mm. complicated in the UK. Uh, but the pre-surgical hypnosis, and, and it wasn't due to my research, I will add, um, but the pre-surgical hypnosis uh, in the UK now, the Royal College of Anaesthetists now actually recommend pre-surgical hypnosis. Now, mm. unfortunately, they don't call it that. They call it something different, preparing the mind and everything else. But essentially, it is pre-surgical hypnosis because they've seen the results of, of, of what happens if you actually use it and the better recovery quality. I mean, my own research um, showed that people emotionally, they had a better re emotional recovery quality. So before surgery, they were depressed. After surgery, with pre-surgical hypnosis, they were back to what we call population norm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing that was interesting is we looked at the hypnosis group compared to a research group and we looked at pain. Um, one of the things that was interesting is the hypnosis group a week after surgery uh, perceived that they were feeling less pain than the other group. Uh, and when we drilled down, we actually found that they were taking less pain medication. So so therefore well, it's, it's cheaper, cheaper, quicker. Yeah. Yeah, so it appeared to make the medication more effective. And as you say, so it, it, it's cheaper, uh, it frees up bed space quicker, so there's a lot of benefits there. So is that the removal or the reduction in stress, pre-surgical stress, that would come? Yeah, is that it's, primarily it, it's, de it's dealing with the anxiety and the stress and also 
preparing them for it. Uh, and we're also using a lot of post-hypnotic suggestion for them being compliant with, with the surgery going on, uh, the body and the unconscious not worrying that they're being attacked or anything nasty is going on. So trying to gain compliance to go through it uh, and then setting up the mind-body connection for a faster healing response and, and recovery. And of course, that now then feeds into your talk, which is on psychoimmunology. It's Psychoneuroimmunology. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I knew I'd get to words out eventually. It's p and I for short. Yeah. I call it p and I for short because once you've said psychoneuroimmunology several times, you do start falling over it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, the, 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 the topic of, of psychoneuroimmunology, and I say, is this the future of mind-body medicine? Um, because what's very interesting about it, it's it was it was coined in 1975, the, the, the term psychoneuroimmunology. Mm. Uh, it was coined by a Dr. Robert Ader, um, he did a lot of research uh, with an associate, uh, Nicholas Cohen, uh, back at, from that time uh, up until 2011, um, when uh, Robert Ada passed away. Uh, but their study of, of PNI is looking at how feelings and emotions can affect the immune system. Now, there is a lot of scientific evidence, not only their studies, there's a lot of further studies and scientific evidence that feelings and emotions can impact the immune system. We know, for example, that, you know, any grandmother would say, you know, if somebody's really depressed and really down, oh, you'll catch a cold. You do, um, because your immune system is compromised uh, due to depression, anxiety and so forth. So we know there's a mind-body link. Uh, we know that feelings and emotions can affect the immune system. And we also know from our own experience that feelings and emotions can be modified by talking therapy such as hypnotherapy. So if we take that full circle, uh, we can impact the immune system. That is the theory. And I would say or would argue that there's now enough evidence there to indicate that that is the case. Uh, and my talk, I'll be giving a, a, a rough history of PNI, uh, explaining it a little bit more and looking at the components behind it and giving you some of the research of that's seemed to prove that it's effective with hypnotherapy and that we can modify it. And um, we'll give you some case histories and research behind it and give an indicator of how potentially it can impact your hypnotherapy business going forward. OK. And how if you were to offer a suggestion to somebody as to how that might happen, how it can help their hypnotherapy business, what would one example of that be, for instance? A uh, good example. So, uh, I mean, quite often we'll teach self-hypnosis. Good example right. there. Uh, there is a, a good piece of scientific research was they, they looked at hay fever sufferers mm -hmm. and they had hay fever sufferers that were medicated and they had a, a, a another group that did had no medication they had self-hypnosis that was all they were taught self-hypnosis for the hay fever uh, both groups were effective the medication dealt with one group hypnosis dealt with the other group equally as effectively uh, but actually it had it had a much longer term effect than the medication did so and no potential side effects yeah Okay, so, so, that was so it's a natural based solution then. Yeah, yeah. And more and more people now are looking uh, more for holistic answers yeah, to of course, absolutely. treatments. Uh, and, and yeah, and if, if we can make that big difference with the mind, you know, you're, you're healing yourself, if you like. That's, yes. That's the yeah. I mean, doesn't that go back to that whole thing that um, when any drug comes to market, it's measured against placebo, which is about 30% effective at most times. Uh, yeah, and well, it's it's compared to how effective it is compared to placebo, and quite often it's not very much at all, particularly with a lot of the anxiety medication and things. Yeah, so, no, absolutely, and I think it's thirty percent minimum for placebo, pretty much in most cases, and it has yeah. to be twenty percent higher, and often it's not. My memory yeah, serves yeah, me right. so like some of, some of the research on all the some of some of the sort of the drug trials, uh, the, the, it's the the effectiveness you could argue are a little bit dubious. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> that's, another story. that's another story. That's, that's, not yeah, my, that's a that's separate not discussion altogether. <laughs> yeah, that's not even, that's not, not going to be covered in my presentation. <laughs> no, absolutely not. But it is, and it's funny because I was only reading a piece of research earlier, uh, which was done by one of the research organizations. I think they're in the US, but it was I think it was a worldwide market where they spoke about how hypnotherapy was a 12 billion mark in 2023 was expected yep. to increase by up to 30 percent per annum for the next eight years uh, i did i did see that piece of research before we started talking today <laughs> Interestingly yeah. enough. And, and it really focuses on the anxiety on how people are more aware of their mental health and how hypnotherapy is is yeah. part of that solution but also 
that that mind body connection is a massive part of that as well absolutely yeah no. and i think you that's know going to be a big thing going forward yeah and i think you and me spoke about that because i think last year when we were talking you were basically i can't remember the exact stats that you had but say on your and i know you're not dealing with the um the the, the cancer stuff this year but uh, you, when you were talking about figures you were talking about was it one in two or one in three people was going to be One, affected one in two, one in one two. in two Yeah, born since 19, 1960 in the Western world will, will be affected by cancer. There are I was various reading reasons behind that, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So 50, yeah 50 no absolutely people, you know. and as we move to a more holistic world and people who want that that you know that section Yeah. is increasing on a continuous basis Absolutely, yeah. and uh, then Talks like yours, Gary, become very, very important because they create awareness of an alternative drug-free solution. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously, we have to be careful in areas such as cancer, obviously, which is my Of course. strategy, is obviously we can't advocate a drug-free No, no, no. So, for that. sorry. Uh, I mean, but as a, as we're a actually, complementary yeah. therapy, as opposed, I hate the word the words alternative therapy, because as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't advocate giving alternative therapy. I advocate giving complementary therapy. Let, then I'll rephrase that. <laughs> complementary with less potential side effects yeah, absolutely. Yeah. is that okay Yeah. Or, or to enhance what's already <laughs> there, what is being used. correct correct oh no i mean obviously look it, it will work in conjunction with with, with Yeah. drugs that's what happens and that's what you're saying is basically Yeah, um absolutely. uh, you know you're working pre-surgical you're working with the body you're working with stress and the mind-body connection Yeah. um, all helping the body to recover and get the immune system working Yeah, absolutely. And we do a lot of experimental work uh, with the immune system for actually, uh, or, I mean, it, it's a difficult one because we're not allowed to work with cancer, obviously. And there isn't the evidence there, despite what people claim in America and other places. Um, but some people claim that, yes, you can have an effect on the cancer doing work with the immune system. Um, and I get asked all the time to do work in that area, which I do, providing it's it's made clear there is no scientific evidence behind it we, to this stage. And it's purely for, for the patient's psychological well-being. Um, we can do that, but there has been some interesting results sort of worldwide through through that sort of area. Okay. And of course, your talk on over that weekend in, in Dublin in April will Yeah. be on that mind-body connection and, and It will that be. those Yep. connections. Psychoneuroimmunology. Yeah. Yeah. So, It I will mean, you're not basically saying that you're, you're, you're curing anything particular, but you are talking about the ability of the, the mind Yeah. to influence the immune system and Yeah, support and we're the gonna healing. and we're and we're gonna look at the the empirical evidence behind it. You know, not the hearsay that somebody will put up on social media. We're gonna look at, you know, some of the scientific papers, the, the empirically evidence stuff. I'm looking forward to that. Good, excellent. I'm looking forward to being there and presenting it. Well, this 5th and 6th of April, 2025, it's less than, it's about five months away from now, give or take. Already. I know, it only seems like yesterday we closed the last one, but anyway. Uh, Gary, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you very much for inviting me and I look forward to seeing you again at the Irish one Absolutely, in April. absolutely. And for anyone who's thinking to come to the conference, Gary's talk, Gary is a wealth of knowledge and his talk will be absolutely amazing and you will leave fully informed on that topic by the time you leave. So thank you all very much for your time and I wish you all a wonderful day.